A while loop is a way of executing some code as long as the condition of the loop is met. In this example, I've set a counter variable to zero, and I'm testing the value of the counter variable in the while condition. This condition checks to see whether the counter variable is less than zero. Because I've set it to zero before the loop, this condition is never going to be met. And if I run the code, I get no output. If you have a situation where you want to execute a block of code at least once, regardless of whether it meets the while condition or not, what you can do is create a begin end block, move the while condition to the end of the block, and the while condition won't get evaluated until after the first execution of the block. So in this case, even though the counter variable is set to zero, this block of code will get executed it will print out the counter variable, add one to the value of the counter variable, and then check the while condition to see whether the counter variable is less than zero, which it will not be. After the first execution, it will be equal to one. So the while loop will end at that point. So if we run that, we see it prints out the value of the counter variable from this line. Then it adds one to it, checks the value of the counter variable, and because it's now one, this condition, which checks whether the value is less than zero, is not true. So the program ends. If we come back to our original example without using begin end, let's say I change the condition of the while loop to check whether the counter variable is less than 10. If I run this, I see that it prints out zero through nine, and when the counter variable is incremented to 10, this condition is no longer met and the loop ends without printing out the value 10. In a more complicated program, you may be doing some processing inside the loop that would require you to break out of the loop. In that case, you could use the break keyword. As an example of this, let's say I wanted to break out of this loop when the counter reaches five. If I write break if counter equals five and I re-execute this program, I see that it only prints out zero through four. An alternative way of writing this while statement would be to use the until keyword. Just like the unless keyword is kind of the reverse of the if statement, until is kind of the reverse of while. When you use while, you're saying while this condition is true, carry out this block of code. When you use until, you're saying while this is not true, or until this becomes true, carry out this block of code. The way it's written right now, this is not going to do anything because it's already true that the counter is less than 10 because we've set it to zero here. We don't see any output. If I change this from counter less than 10 to counter equals 10, then it's going to execute this loop until the counter has been incremented to 10. So if I execute this, I see that it prints out zero through nine, just as it did earlier with the while loop when we used counter less than 10. If we want to write this until statement all on a single line, we need to make a few changes. First, I need to separate these two statements with a semicolon. And then I need to separate the conditional expression from the rest of the code. In an if statement, we use the then keyword to separate the if statement. With until, we need to use either a semicolon or the do keyword, which works in a similar way to then. And if we execute the program, we see the same result as when we delimit the code with new lines. Another way we could write the previous example instead of using until is to use the loop method. This method runs infinitely, so we need to use a break statement in order to break out of the loop. In this case, I'm saying if the counter is equal to 10, then the loop should end. So if I run this, I achieve the same effect that I got with the until approach and the while approach before that. The for loop in Ruby operates on objects that have an each method. Arrays and hashes are examples of objects like that, and there are lots of other types of objects that have an each method. In this example, I've defined an array called fruit, and the syntax of the for loop is to say for some variable name in this enumerable object. So what the for loop does is it takes a value out of this enumerable object using the each method, and it puts that value into this loop variable, and then you can access that variable inside the body of the loop. In this case, I'm printing out that value. 
and here we see the results of the loop. If I want to write the for loop on a single line, I can use the do keyword to separate the body of the loop, or I can use a semicolon.